Okay, welcome back everyone to the Athletes Mind podcast. Um, We are back again with another basketball episode. You guys seem to really like these ones. So today we have Zulema on the podcast. Um, Thank you for coming on. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are in LA at the moment. Is that right? Uh, um, Yes, for AU I'm in LA, but I I live in Orange County. Okay, right. Yeah. So how are you finding it over there at the moment? You know, it's it's very easy because I'm determined to, you know, get better at basketball. So whatever it takes, I'm willing to do. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So when we have our athletes on the podcast, the first question we always ask is how you actually got into playing basketball. What has the journey sort of looked like from the start to now? So basically, like I kind of grew up around basketball because my brothers used to play before me. Yeah. And initially how I first started was my sister had took me to my first basketball tryouts. And I ended up making the team. And that's when I started with boys. Nice. Yeah. So um, what sort? how many teams have you played for so far? I'm sure there'd be quite a lot on the list, but um, rough estimate on that. So when I first started, I played with YBT Elite. I was, I was on them for a little bit. And then that was my boys team that I first tried out for. Yeah. And then secondly, I switched to girls, which I currently play with girls now. I was on OC Rain based off in Orange County. Mm, yeah, no. And, so, um, sorry, um, I, how old were you when you um, moved to just playing with girls? Um, I was still the same age. So I was about 12. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, And have you played any other sports growing up or has the main focus just been basketball? Yeah, when I was younger, I played soccer and I played that for two years, realized it wasn't my passion and I just do basketball. Nice, yeah. Uh, yeah, soccer's good. I play a bit of that as well. But um, yeah, so you currently have a national campaign um, running. Um, sort of explain how that's going and how you actually got into all of that. Uh, I do have a national campaign for Ethica and that happened because the Ethica representative, you know, went up to my trainer, Paris, and, you know, she asked if she knew any kid that would be interested in, you know, doing the photo shoot for them. Mm-hmm. And he had mentioned my name and asked if I would if I could do it. So then he went and emailed my dad and said, if I'd be interested. And then that's what my dad told me and I was interested. So we ended up doing it. Yeah. Awesome. And as well as that, um, you have an influencer sponsorship. Um, how has that experience been, especially at a young age doing all of that? Oh yeah. You know, it's a blessing. Cause you know, I would have never expected it. I got to experience like many new things. Like I got to meet some new people that I didn't know before. And then I also got to experience like cameras being around. I mean, I've been around cameras, but it wasn't for the sole purpose of me. So, mm-hmm. you know, it was based off of me. Yeah. Well, were, you a little, were you a little nervous when you first started getting in front of the camera? And have you sort of adapted now? I wasn't really nervous because like I mentioned before, I was around cameras. So mm-hmm. it wasn't something that I was completely brand new to. Yeah. And you were very involved in the whole social media side of things. Um, what is your opinion on social media as a whole? Do you think it's good um, for to influence people and get them into basketball? I feel like social media is a great place because like it's a good place to put your ideas out and for people around the world to get familiarized with your name. And, you know, I feel like it's good to influence people because they might be able to take into consideration your ideas and make it to where they fit theirs, you know? Yeah. Do you think there's any negatives to it? There are, however, there are negatives to it because, like, you might receive some rooted obnoxious comments, which obviously some people may know, and it may change what good could be. So it may turn out bad or change people's perceptions, which never happened to me, but I'm just saying. Yeah, no, 100%, because I think with social media, like, most of the athletes that we have had on, um, obviously there are positives to it. It inspires people, which, you know, which is what you're doing. I'm sure people are inspired by you. But, um, you know, like you said, the negatives, the comments, um, it can sometimes get to people. But I think if uh, athletes can learn to block that out, it's good. Um, Now, your dad, uh, Antonio, uh, he seems to be very involved in your career, which is, you know, that's great to see. Um, Would you say he's been your biggest role model in your career? Yeah, my dad is very involved in my career. And, you know, he pushes me to go stronger when I need it the most. So I would say he's my biggest role model because he stays strong with me. Mm, nice. Is there anyone else that sort of, um, I'm sure there is a long list of people, but anyone else that sort of helps you in that aspect? 
Um, yes, you know, I have my whole family for like guidance and stuff like that. They push me, they tell me what I could do better and stuff like that, because I'm not the most perfect player. There's still things I need to work on because I'm still young and I'm willing to learn because I want to get better. So yeah. my family, I have friends, you know? Yeah, that's cool. And um, who is someone you look up to in, you know, a pro level, maybe the WNBA or NBA? Um, any players that you model your game after, maybe? Some people I model my game after is like Sue Bird and Destiny Henderson because I feel like their skill set is like really high. But of course, it comes with practice. They practice very hard. And I feel like I can relate to them on like a level because first of all, Destiny short like I am. I'm a short guard. Mm. And then there's Sue Bird who's a point guard. So she's kind of like the floor general. And I feel like I could pick up some things off of her to improve my game. Nice, nice. And you have done, um, going on to training, you've done training uh, for ProVision with Ryan Crad, uh, Sean Marshall, uh, Dylan Dylan Imadi, and um, some others. Um, how much have they helped you take your game to another level? I have done um, training with ProVision and they developed me since like the beginning because I haven't been playing basketball that long. Mm. So for example, all of them have like taught me many different things. Like Sean has taught me how to fasten up my handles because when I first came to him, I couldn't even dribble the brawl without losing it. So he's taught me how to fasten my handles. And he's also taught me how to have different options when going against different defenses. Because, you know, when you go against different people, they have de- different defenses. So, like, some people might have, like, a 2-3 press or some people might have a man-a-man. You have yeah. to have different options because if you don't, like, it'll – you only have, like, one set and it'll be easy to guard. You'll most likely lose if you don't have many options, especially me being a point guard. I have to have many options. Of course, yeah. And I have Ryan. He's taught me footwork and he sharpened me up as a player, like all around. And he's also taught me how to stay mentally strong because if you're not mentally strong, there will be people at your games eventually. When you get to the higher level, there will be pe- people that try to say things to get into your head and take you out your game. So when people start doing it to me, it won't be anything new because, you know, he's already trained me to be mentally strong. Hmm. And then, yes, like you mentioned, I do have my trainer, Dylan Nimadi. He's from something different. He's from the hoop house. He's focused on what I feel is one of the main important things for a short guard is a shooting. To be able to shoot, he's he's made me stronger and more consistent on my shooting. And he's also taught me the ability to change speeds and finish through contact and basically just be overall a strong player. And I feel like all, with all these trainers, they like basically just took my whole talent to a whole different level and have made me the player I am today. Nice. That that's cool that you know you have the trainers like helping you with different parts of your game. It was interesting that you mentioned um the mental side as well. That's definitely like really important that you're getting ready for that and your trainers like preparing you for that early. Because especially like you said, when you get to the higher level, it is something that you know players if they're not ready for it, it can be a bit of a shock. I think so. That's good that you're um you know getting ready for that. Um, and you are part of a Nike sponsor team called our West Coast Premier in LA. Um, what has that been like, you know, the experience being a part of that? Yeah, backstory is I remember how I said I used to play on a, a team back in Orange County. Yeah. I kind of grew the competition and I felt like it was time for a change. So that's when I went and tried out for West Coast Premier. I made the team and, you know, everything, it was a completely different ball game. I mean, everybody was different. I met people that were taller than me. And like, I finally got to understand what my trainers were teaching me and what the sole purpose of it was because my trainers could teach me something, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I've got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's, that's what I feel like is like, some people say like, there's a, there's a practice player. And then there's a actual player that can apply it to the game, Mm. you know? And if I feel like all my trainers are just teaching me something, like there won't be really no sole purpose unless I'm able to apply it to the game. Yeah. I feel like, and that just taught me taught me and changed me as a person in just general, like on the floor. Nice. Yeah. Um, and you do a lot of training, especially for your age. Um, are there ever times where you get tired or, you know, a bit burnt out? Do you try to have a balance with training and, you know, maybe spending time with family, friends? Yeah, me personally, I feel like it's better that I'm doing more training at a young age because me, myself, like I have a lot of energy. I'm going to be I'm going to be for real. I have energy. Yeah. And I just love to do things. That's just me who I am. And I feel like me doing this at such a young age is just going to have more of like more of progress for me and faster progress. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I never get tired because I wouldn't put myself to do something that I know I can't fully commit to or I knew I wouldn't do good. Like I like challenges, but I wouldn't put myself to know that I can't keep up with what I love. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I do try to balance it, though, so that it doesn't feel like everything just revolves around basketball 
which it does it does to me but i would like to have other things to do you know what i'm saying awesome. so like when i get my when i'm doing my reps i either recover or i sleep because i love to sleep yeah i do that majority of the time you know or if i'm not doing that i'm hanging out with friends you know being social like every kid should yeah because yeah. i think it is very important to have a balance because um i think we interviewed uh a basketball recently um jade and cecile he um sort of s- talked about how he trains a lot but it's important for him to have that balance because you can get burnt out but like you said you know you're young full of energy so i think it's good to take advantage of that you know you know train a lot and at the end of the day it's what you love so why not um and something that we do ask is um yeah and you are young so this question is a bit open-ended but what are your goals for the future? Do you have anything in mind that you want to achieve specifically? Yeah, you know, one of my biggest goals for myself, it might be for others, which is one of my biggest goals is, you know, to stay me and like just get be a better version of myself by the time I get older, like yeah. see improvement. And something I want to achieve is become a McDonald's All-American like every basketball wants, every basketball player wants to, you know, like what they like to call a burger girl. Yeah, That's yeah. What I'm when I get older. Nice. Yeah. And um, what about like maybe WNBA? Any aspirations with that sort of league? Yeah, yeah that's that's the main goal. That's yeah. the main main goal is to get there. Yeah. Um, and something that we do also like to ask is, um, you know, sort of going back to that mental side of things, like before a basketball game, what does your pregame routine look like? Is there anything that you do to get you ready? Um, do you have a set routine or so do you just sort of go with the flow? I do have a set routine, but my pregame routine isn't like nothing too special, you know? So basically I sleep a lot. Like I mentioned before, I feel like that's just a great way for me to like maintain my energy, you know? So it's not, I'm not like just wasting it. It's like, it's getting refueled while I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. So I wake up, but I do wake up three hours before my game. And when I do wake up three hours before my game, the first thing I do is take all my vitamins because that's key. And yeah. then second, I fix my hair because when I wake up, my bed head is crazy. Like it goes crazy. Like right now I have my clothes done because, you know, that's part of my routine. Yeah. But if I didn't, like my bed head would go crazy. And then what I what else I like to do is, you know, um, eat because you can't play a game without no energy, you know, play on an empty stomach. That's not going to be a good game. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> he mentioned uh, the bed hair. Yeah, I mean, with me, because i got, like, curly hair, that happens with me when I wake up as well. It's not good. So, yeah. Um, and are there any cool moments you can think of playing basketball, maybe buzzer beaters or just a big win that you've had recently? Yes, I have had cool moments. Like, for example, there was one time where I did have this tournament with my team, and on Saturday we ended up, unfortunately, losing both games, which put us at third place. Mm. So on Sunday, I came back with a different mentality because I knew we had to win. So when I came in with a different mentality, we ended up winning both games, Mm. right? And we ended up getting first place, and I was MVP for that tournament. Nice. And that was my first time being MVP since I first started. Mm. So it was definitely confidence boosting. Yeah, definitely a memory, I can say. Um, Would you say basketball has taught you important life lessons, you know, like – a lot of athletes say like on the court, you know, it's changed their life. But what about off the court? Have you learned anything from basketball that you've been able to apply to other areas? Yeah, I've learned definitely a lot of things. It's definitely taught me a lot of lessons as a kid. So me personally, I feel like it's taught me how to be patient and calm because Mm -hmm. I feel like if I'm not patient, like I won't see my results as fast. Like, you know, if I don't see my results or something like that, or like if you're not patient to see the results, like that you put in, like obviously when you put work on the court, you want to see results fast. Yeah. It's not going to happen because you need to keep on working. It's yeah. not just you do something and I got it. It's something that's consistent. Yeah. It's consistent growth, like I what I like to call it. And, you know, if I'm patient, I'm going to eventually see the results. Yeah. So I feel like staying patient and calm has taught me, like, how to be the person I am because it's taught me how to get better. Yeah, that, that's actually awesome to hear that, um, you know, at your age, you're already learning that because I know a lot of even people my age or younger kids, they they just want it like that, like without putting in any work. They that's just, you know, people are impatient. But if you can learn to be patient, like you said, that's a very, very good skill to have, I think. So that's good. With not being patient, you don't want to lose love for the passion you have because you don't see what you think you should be. 100%. But if you work to think what you should be, then it'll come. 
Yeah, well said. Um, and what advice would you give to younger athletes um, around your age who have dreams to play high levels in sports or even just get into the sport? Advice I would give to people is like, don't let people's opinions define who you are. Like if you feel you could do it, do it for the better of you, not for the better of people's perceptions. Because if you do that, you're not benefiting yourself. You're benefiting other people's perceptions on you, which you never want to do. Um, yeah, because I think like, you know, at the end of the day, you have your goals and you want to sort of go for that. Whatever people think of you, it doesn't matter. You just got to, you know, follow your passion. Um, exactly. Now, the last question we always ask uh, before our athletes leave is, um, if you could be any athlete in the world, who would it be and why? It can be past or present and it doesn't have to be basketball. So somebody I want to be, if I had to choose to be, I would definitely be Kobe Bryant because I feel like he's just a well-rounded person in general off and on the court because off the court, it's like he wants himself to win, of course, which everybody wants, but he also wants the people around him to win. Mm. And I say that because he he was one of the big like hurt people for the girls basketball. You know, he had his team, AAU team, which a lot of people know a lot of people were on it, you know, so I feel like he's a big inspiration to others. And me myself, hmm. yeah. very caring for the community. Yeah, and he was, you know, very, very hardworking. Yeah, probably the hardest working athlete that I've probably ever seen. And yeah, great inspiration. That is a good one. No, no one has said that one before. So nice. Um, that about wraps it up. So thank you for coming on the podcast. We really appreciate it. Um, it's good to have the younger athletes come on as well. Uh, you know, the basketballers, people love them. So yeah, thanks once again. Um, everyone listening and watching, this will be on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. Go and check out the Instagram, the TikTok. And, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you.